Continue where we left off, man. Friends, we're just rolling along here. Amen. So let's continue uh, again where we left off. We was talking about a subject of differences between Messianic Judaism and Christianity. Chris, Christianity. My God, I get tongue-tied sometimes on this stuff. All right, so let's continue. We're going to finish off with the final two parts of this article. Again, this is from Jewish Voice. And this was posted a couple of years ago, actually five years ago. Wow, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, and then the final part of this article, which again, has been up there for so long. That, that's to show you that people are still looking at this stuff and still contemplating what should we do? Which way should we go? And it's a no-brainer. Come on, you got to live free now that you've become uh, one in Messiah Yeshua. And we need to let go of some stuff. I mean, some stuff, some traditions have to be let go. I mean, I think I was talking about this in a video on Facebook, uh, I think a few days ago, and I was talking about the subject and now some of the churches and Messianic congregations, and I was trying to hit more of the Messianic congregations. A lot of them are just dead and dry, and that is not good because when you look at the Bible, you see churches that were not like that, especially uh, churches like the Book of Hebrews, which was written to Jewish Christians, and uh, I believe, again, the Galatians, um, you know, these people were just on fire. They were going, and then you got all kinds of churches in the New Testament, and I think it was a mixed crowd. I think there was Jews in most of them, but for some reason, I know there was Gent I'm sorry, there were Gentiles also mixed in with the churches, and some churches were all Gentiles. For example, when you look at the Book of Romans, when you look in First Corinthians, you talk about uh, Gentiles. However, when you again, when you look at some books of the Bible, there is a, a combination of both. You can tell by the way Paul addresses things. He addresses things because there are people there that understand this. He wouldn't be talking about it to a people that didn't understand what it was about, about Jewish laws, culture, uh, observances, and all these things. He, he, tapped, he tackled it because people were there and they needed to hear this. It makes a whole lot of sense. Why would you be talking about a subject that no one understood? You talk about things that people that are there, they understand it, and they say, oh, it resonates with my mind. I understand. Why is he saying this? Because we're here. We're Jewish. We're here, and we're mixed in with the Gentiles, and that's what God said to do. We all get together from now on. We don't have to separate. It's a new covenant, and now we're going to follow the Lord Yeshua in one mind, one spirit, and one body. The body of Messiah. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. We've got two final points. And the number one point here is dietary laws. And that's another thing that people seem to have a problem with today. Especially Messianic Jews. They they kind of hammer people over the head sometimes. Not all, but some people become really, really bad to other people that don't follow dietary laws. For example, it says here, most Christians do not observe the biblical commandment regarding dietary practices. These include the avoidance of scavengers of land or sea, with the exception of mammals that both chew the cud and have hooves like sheep, goats, and deer. For many Messianic Jewish people, the basic biblical commandments found in the Torah are still observed. This observance enables Messianic Jewish people to maintain their God-given identities as Jews. Now, listen, I understand what that, that statement, but I don't totally agree with it. You don't have to identify with your Jewy be, just to, just with that. You have to identi identify your Jewy with the uh, with Jesus, with the with the with the Messiah. That's more so of how identifying your Jewy, not so much the dietary laws of keeping kosher, which is not a bad thing, and eat, not eating shrimp and shellfish is actually a good thing if it's health wise. But we are no longer bound under that law. New Testament teaches that. Paul talked about that when it came to food. I mentioned that early on in this podcast. So it's something that's optional for the Christian or the 
Messianic Jew. It's up to them. It's up to you. It's up to her. It's up to him if they want to observe that. And if they don't, don't get on people's case. Leave it alone. That's between them and God. I think people, what they want to do, they want to step in and, oh, I'm just trying to help. But don't. Don't help unless somebody asks you. If somebody asks you a question, use the Bible and stop, again, using your own thoughts and your own opinions. Let the Bible do its work and teach us. Amen. So, again, when it comes to dietary laws, it's optional. If you do, observe a good thing. If you don't, that's up to you. Nobody's condemning you. Okay, because Paul made it clear in the New Testament letters what you can do and what's permissible. Listen, stop focusing on the minors and focus on the majors. Amen? All right, the last part is this says the Messiah and the Jewish people. It says, while there are many similarities between Messianic Judaism, Christianity, and Judaism, or rabbinical, if you ask me, I want to put rabbinical Judaism, Messianic Jewish people embrace their Jewish heritage while believing that Yeshua is the Messiah, the promised Redeemer of Israel and all of mankind. Amen and amen. It says, if you're interested in learning more about Messianic Jewish people or Jewish voice ministries, contact us, blah, blah, blah. And that's the end of the article. Amen. So again, there are similarities, but there are differences. It doesn't have to be that way. And I had said this earlier in my video that when it started, it was one thing. It was Judaism and Christianity. It was one. It wasn't a separate thing. Man separated and the Judaizers separated, and the rabbis separated, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they separated. They said, you're no longer a Jew because you don't do this and because you don't do that. And that's what we see today. And people say, just because you don't do this or that, you're not Jewish. And that's what I put on Facebook. So that means that if I don't do this and I don't do that, I'm no longer Jewish? Says who? Says you? That's not what God says. God said, no, you're still a Jew, whether it's because it's an inward thing. It's an inward thing. Not only is it an outward thing, which it is, but it's also an inward thing. So stop thinking it's always an outward thing. And that's what people do. They think it's only an outward thing, the what we do. It's not what also what all, all things we do, but what he did. What did he do on the cross? Amen? So let's focus on what he did so much more so than what we need to do. Amen? And, I'm, right, and we're going to continue where we left off, my friends. We're just rolling along here. Amen.